Welcome to the Elementor Pro. My name is Jared. Today we're going to talk about how sections, columns, padding, margins, and all of that stuff work so that you can create good looking pages and space things out and just make the pages really usable. You know, when you create new sections and you start to throw elements in there, things can kind of get smashed up and just not look really good. And so understanding how to separate sections using margin or padding and even elements themselves, separating them in columns using margins and paddings and stuff like that, it's good to have an understanding on how all of this works. So we're going to go through this and look at how you create sections, columns, how you use margins and padding within them. So we have a blank Elementor page here. We have our header and our footer, but everything in between is just a blank Elementor page. When we click on this plus button, we get a structure that we can choose from. This is going to create a section and it's going to create a column or a variety of columns. So for example, if we choose just this one, we've created one section and one column. If we choose this option here, we've created one section with two columns within it. But as you can see, there is not a whole lot of spacing there. We can grab an element such as a image element and throw it in and change that to an actual image. So we'll just choose an image here and hit insert. And we have an image and I can even duplicate this and bring this one across so that we've got two of them side by side. But this is smashed up against the header and the spacing just doesn't look very good. So we're gonna click on the this area here for our section and go over to the Advanced tab. And the Advanced tab has the ability for us to change the margin and the padding. Now, there's two ways to think of this. A margin is going to add space outside of the section. Padding is gonna add space inside the section. So essentially, as long as your background color is the same or your background is the same, it's not gonna matter which one you change here. Margin and padding are gonna look the same. But if we changed our background to something else, it might not have the effect that we were looking for. Let me give you an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 40 pixels of margin to the top and the bottom of this particular section. That gives it a good amount of space from the header, and I feel like that's just a better choice to have a little bit of margin there. But if I wanted this section to have a background color, so I go and choose a background color, and let's just make the background color bright red so it's super noticeable, notice that there is now a space between that, that background color and the section above it, which is the header. That's because the margin, as I described before, the margin adds space outside of the section. It doesn't add space inside of the section. So what we would need to do is go over to advanced and change those margins back to zero and then add 40 pixels of top and 40 pixels of bottom padding instead and now you can see it goes full. So a red background is probably something you wouldn't use. You might use an image as a background or even a video as a background and if you run into an issue where there, the spacing looks weird as it did when we had the margin set, know that you need to use padding instead. The same thing applies inside of these columns. If we go and look at one of our columns, we go to advanced and we wanted to add some margin. So say we wanted to add like 20 pixels of margin all the way around, that looks fine right here. But if we changed the background color uh, of this column to a different color, let's choose blue, like a bright blue so we can just see it, um, then you can see we have spacing here that we don't have filled in. But if we go to our advanced tab and we take our margins back down to zero and we add 20 pixels of padding instead, you can see now we have that full spacing because it's adding the spacing to the inside of the column using padding rather than adding spacing to the outside of the column, which is using margin. So you can do that both within sections and also within columns. And when you're doing that within columns, it works per column. So I would have to go and add the same attributes over to this other column if I wanted to have the same effect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put 20 pixels here and I'm going to add a color to this because I have a few other things that I wanna describe here. Now, 
because I am the way that I am, this has to be the same blue color. So I'm just gonna grab that and then go back over to this column and make that the same blue color. So now what you see here, you know, if we click outside, you can see that these sections don't have any divider, any spacing within them. And so if we go back to our section and go to layout, there are some options such as column gap. Now we have default, which essentially is no gap. We can add a narrow gap or a wide gap, but notice that it is still just adding spacing. There's nothing actually changing the amount of space between the columns. It's just changing the amount of space between the elements that are in the column there. So one thing that you might want to do to affect how something looks is changing that column gap to something like no gap uh, or even going into custom and changing the gap to zero pixels so that those images butt up next to each other. Of course, that does away with our padding or our margin that we added, but that might be an effect that you're looking for. If you are gonna go with an effect like this, then you definitely don't wanna have any padding added to those individual columns because it just doesn't matter. You can see that even if I delete the padding that we added to these columns, it doesn't affect it. So let's go back to our section and look at the spacing. We still have that blue background color, which I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of as well because we don't need that. So you can see now we have some natural column spacing there, and this is gonna make it much easier for us to see the column spacing uh, by set to either default or changing to no gap or changing to an extended gap. Uh, you can see, you know, we can set those and make those changes. It's mostly necessary when you have a wide full width layout. Our column width right now is boxed, and so you can see they're boxed in. It doesn't go to the full edges of the page. If we choose full width, now you can see things look a little bit weird. Going full width with this, we want the images to go all the way to the side, and we probably don't even want the images to connect. This is more common with a full width column, and so I'm gonna delete this particular column here, and we're gonna go full width with this column. I'm actually gonna get rid of this image and I'm going to change the section background from a color to an image to better illustrate this. So we're gonna choose an image. We'll just go ahead and choose this one, hit insert, and you can see it is full background now. I wanna to go to cover just to better position this image and then set no repeat, and now my background image is set. So you can also see that the column goes full width. Now you might not want it to go full width in a scenario where you have a full width background, but it really just depends on what you're trying to achieve. So that's where this option of having things either be full width or boxed is good. Uh, boxed is gonna keep everything kind of centered, and then within that boxed area, we can set the width and change the width of the area which I've done in other tutorials, like my landing page tutorial, change the width just to keep everything more centered and not covering up so much of the background. Um, and then, you know, there is an argument for using full width depending on the types of elements that you're putting in place. Now, there's also a way to adjust the section height to display more of the background. And we can do that by changing the height to a minimum height and then sliding the slider around to get the height the appropriate size. So I could go with something like 400, and now we have a section that is 400 pixels high, and then, well, it's actually 400 pixels plus the 80 pixels that we added in padding, because in this scenario now we don't need padding. Notice that if we go and delete the padding out of here, it really doesn't do anything uh, other than just shorten our big section up. So. I feel like I'm kind of jumping around a little bit and maybe making things a little bit confusing, um, and I apologize for that. There's just so many settings in here and things that we can change um, that sometimes they kind of stumble over each other. But in those instances where you set something and then you go and change something else and you're wondering why it isn't working in the way that you thought that it would, know that there could be a setting that you adjusted already. And that's where I think you know what I'm doing here is maybe going to help you figure out or troubleshoot some of those issues that you might end up having. You know, obviously the padding is adding space inside, even with a background image here. If we went and added uh, some some margin, it's still going to add the white space above. So now with a background section and we have 400 pixels in height. 
and our section is boxed in instead of full width, we can start adding elements to this section and those elements can have their attributes changed as well. So for example, if we added a button and we added a text heading to this section, let's just go ahead and drop that in there and center these. Both of those are a little hard to, to see. It's hard to see them. So one thing we might wanna do with our column is add some sort of a styling behind it or add something to make our items pop out from the background a little bit more. And that could be something as simple as adding a background color, which is not very attractive as a black box. And it is a little bit close and tight on those elements that are inside. So this is where we can use our margin or our padding. And in this instance, what would we use? Because we have a background color, we would want to use padding because we want to add space inside of the column. And so we can add something like 20 pixels of space uh, or maybe even you know 30 pixels of space just to make it a little bit bigger. Still not a very attractive box around our content that is blocking out everything behind it. So we could do things like lower our opacity and so we can lower the opacity of our box a little bit, which makes it nice. Then you can see through it, but it still is a you know pretty boring square box. And so from there, we can come in here and add like a 20 pixel border radius or something like that to it, which now gives us nice rounded edges instead. And so we have rounded edges and maybe even we would want to add a border to those rounded edges as well. So we can add a solid border around that and then maybe make that border something that um, would, uh, would make it noticeable. And so we'd want to add maybe a two pixel border to that. We've got a gray color. And so now if we click away, you can see we've got a column that has rounded edges that has a border going around it and a background color that helps a section stick out a little bit better. Of course, what would also help is changing the color of that font to white and then making that button a color that stood out a little bit more as well. But in this video, I hope that you learned that sections can be modified. You can expand them in different ways using margin and padding, and that those really don't matter too much until you start to put items in the background of that section or that column. And then now you know whether to choose padding or whether to choose margin. You also can see that customizing columns on top of sections can be done and different things can be achieved depending on what your goals are. You can add styling to them as well and add things like margin and padding to achieve styling goals within the columns. So lots of stuff that you can do here. Playing around with these settings and experimenting is how you get to know how to use these and become a pro at using them. Throwing in some elements and seeing how it looks when you change opacities and you change padding or margin or you add a background color to a section and then do something else in the column. That's where you really start to build out unique and dynamic web pages uh, utilizing all of the tools that Elementor has for sections and columns. So I hope that this video helped. If you have any questions, definitely ask down in the comment section below. Click the subscribe button on this channel and the thumbs up. We definitely want you to be notified when new videos come out and the thumbs up just lets us know that you're enjoying the content that we're creating. If you would like an email weekly from us with updates, videos, resources, and stuff to help you better learn Elementor and become a pro at Elementor, a link is in the description below for that. And we also, lastly, have an Elementor course that runs you through all of this stuff and teaches you how to do everything. So if you're looking for a structured way to learn Elementor, our course is available, link in the description below. So make sure to check that out. But that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.